Hello and welcome to your Q&A uh, for this MBA program, your Mind Body Awareness program. I'm Petya and I'm your host through this program. I'm your guide and I've really just put some time to create this um, program um, so that it can help you, it can be helpful for people to start to understand their body language a little bit um, better. And by body language, I don't mean just the facial expressions and you know the way that we hold our body physically but i mean the feelings that you get inside your body those feelings are there to guide and to give you some information and i've created this program to hopefully um, give you some ways some new ways new perspectives to um, uh, look at your body and to listen to your body and of course the body and the mind cannot be separated mind is in your body and so I have put this together in a way that hopefully will combine these two very interesting and very deep areas your mind and your body and uh, give you some new tools maybe new ways of looking at um, things so just a couple of housekeeping items first if you have a question and you're on the call right now please feel free to use the chat box to type your question. Um, we'll also bring up people on the call if they want to um, share publicly uh, their questions and their experience and what they're going through. Um, and if you have emailed me some questions prior to the call and you're now not here on the call, you're watching the replay, and uh, I will probably hit some of those points um, that you had questions about um, just by going through this. So today is um, the first Q&A uh, of four and some people have recently joined the program so um, it was quite short notice but hopefully some of you can make the replay if you're not here live right now. I have a few questions, I have some notes that I've uh, written to myself to cover so I'll go on with that and uh, if something comes up while we're here on the call and while, we, while you're listening please let me know I love to hear your feedback know what's coming up for you um, where your challenges are what you need support with because that's exactly what I'm here for in the next four weeks I'm gonna be here fully present to you um, to help you understand and to help you get to know um, yourself on that deeper level that you desire. So just briefly, my background is actually, for those who don't really know me uh, yet, my background is in massage therapy and also spiritual psychotherapy. So I'm a therapist, um, have been doing, have had a practice for just over 10 years and my work has slowly uh, shifted and geared a lot more towards the working with emotion and the physical body and how the physical body manifests our stress, our mental emotional stress, and what we can do to relieve that or to feel better. So um, my physical work and background in massage therapy helps me a lot because I, I recognize that our bodies are really just these incredible containers. Um, you know, we all walk around with this body of ours for as long as we live. And no matter what it looks like, what the abilities are, what, um, you know, you can do or not do, um, we all possess something a lot more sacred within this body. And when I see people who come in and present with different kind of ailments, like pains and aches, and um, illnesses and diseases, and sometimes cancer, um, I've, I've become very curious to know what the expression of the body is. Why is the body expressing in this way? And so I've made that to be my life's work, and uh, it is my passion, and it is something that comes very easy to me, is to help people view their body as a messenger, as this vehicle, as this container through this lifetime and to inquire within the body what we need to know because there's so much information that 
it's hard to be able to explain on a logical level, almost impossible in fact. Yeah, so, so this is um, the approach that I'm going to take with you guys through this program is I want to present to you the body, the physical body, your physical body, as your ally, as your friend, as your um, guide really in this lifetime. And it has so much information for you. And if you can learn its language, things go so much better. You're able to heal from heartbreaks and difficult situations and difficult experiences and, um, you know, things that did or didn't go so well. Uh, you're able to achieve goals. You're able to manifest what you want when you know that you're here and you have this container for a lifetime and it's there to serve you, not to hurt you, right? Because when we have pain, it's very easy to... Um, question, why is this happening to me? What did I do wrong? And sometimes the question really should be, what does this mean for me? What do I need to know here? What is this a sign for? So you'll hear me talk about this bo the body in this way a lot because, you know, this is lovely for me. And um, it, it's wonderful. So I'm going to monitor the chat as much as I can here um, as, we, as we go on. Um, but know that I will definitely get, get to it um, as soon as, you know, in a few moments. And this is a Q&A, so um, I will be checking it. And I want you to ask questions because this is how we're going to learn together, right? Like your questions, my answers, sometimes the answers come completely divinely guided <laughs> um, and they're of help to everyone listening, right? Because if you have a question about something, chances are someone else can benefit from that answer. That's why these Q&A kind of calls are incredible. And in the future, if you want to get some specific attention on you, from me, I'm happy to do this in these calls. Uh, when you ask a very specific question and you're willing for me to focus on it, I will pick the question, I will pick your name and I will bring you on the call and um, we'll really unravel some amazing things. So some of, uh, some of the questions I got were really very much the same. They're from that first uh, guide page on awareness that um, you got in your email and from the first video. I asked you, what are you aware of in your body? In that moment when you were listening to that video and some of, the, some of you said that you felt more present in that moment, you, you were aware of the feelings that were coming up a little bit more. And, you know, your goals for, for, for this program, and, and this is from a couple of you um, who sent me your answers already, you said that you wanted to be more open to learn new things and to get to know yourself on a deeper level and to heal from some old experiences, old traumatic kind of experiences. And um, the common thing for a lot of you was, to allow more love into your life, to be open and allow more love into your experience. And I gather that there's been some hurt in the past at some point on some level. And those are the kinds of deep things that um, we're gonna get into. And today for this specific call, I'm going to actually, um, pick just that. I think we're going to start with love today because what a better topic than um, how to open up um, to love again, especially there's, if there's been some big hurt. And I know that um, some of you on the call and most of you, most of us, myself included, we can relate to that question. How do I feel love again? I've been hurt before something happened in a major way and it really hurt my feelings. It was very painful 
and I don't know if I'll ever be able to love again, be loved again, and trust anyone again. And those are all very, very um, big um, things, you know, and this can leak into other areas of your life, like your work and your business and your relationships with others. So I gather here that we're talking about um, a more intimate relationship. So in this particular case, um, Natasha has this question, um, how do I, you know, am I ever going to be able to love again? And there's been some very big painful experiences um, for her in the past in the relationship and um, things didn't go um, necessarily, you know, as planned, but when do they ever? Um, and so that was painful. So how do I open up to myself up to love again? How do I heal my heart um, from that? And how do I how do I become more present to the now, more present to my relationships and um, allow someone else to come into my life? Well, of course it's hard um, because the first thing that comes up is fear. I'm scared to love again because I got hurt and fear will jump in like that and say, don't do that again you're don't do it silly you got hurt really bad why would you ever want to put yourself through that again and that's the this is exactly what fear is there to do fear is there to protect us because fear knows something that happened that was painful and hurtful and fear's job is to not allow that to happen ever again the way that fear shows up though is different for everyone and sometimes very traumatic where it completely stops you in your tracks and it tells you things like you can't trust anyone not just that person anyone and it makes you isolate yourself and it makes you be very very protective of your time and your space and it completely makes you close up so when we're talking about love, this is what happened to me. I know this very personally, this experience where I had an enormous breakup. It wasn't even a breakup, actually. It was never a relationship to begin with um, physically. But it was this relationship that um, challenged my trust and my the intimacy that I, we had created. So it was just briefly to share the story it was this person who we met and literally fell in love at first sight. Um, we were both in different places. So I lived in Toronto, he lived in Montreal. And we kept talking, kept in touch for about three months. So then he invited me to visit. And um, the adventurous spirit that I am, I decided to go. Um, so again, long story short, this person that we had been talking on the phone for hours upon hours every single day for four months invited me and I said yes I'll come visit and when I got there he didn't show up like not only did he not show up he didn't call he didn't text he didn't give a reason as to why I was basically left very much alone in a city that I don't know in a hotel room and that felt heart shattering. That felt so, so, so alone. I felt completely alone and I blamed myself. I thought that I did something wrong for him to not be there. Well, fast track about, it took me a good five years um, to realize what had happened and the story that I tell about this now is that I somehow, on some level, with my vibration, with the frequency that I was holding, I attracted this abandonment because it mirrored what basically how I was feeling. And this stemmed from my relationship with my father, which 
goes many more years back than this guy. But his action and how that made me feel mirrored that old feeling of abandonment that needed to be healed. And all of a sudden it had nothing to do with him, with this person and everything to do with my experience and the abandonment issue that was still lingering. And that's what was causing me to attract all these other men who were unavailable, emotionally unavailable or physically unavailable. And it really forced me to look deep into how did I learn this? And what can I do to heal myself from the, the feeling of abandonment? Not to heal, you know, to forget this guy or to... All of a sudden, it was way bigger than the guy. It was a huge life lesson for me. And not until I learned this, again, took a couple of years, I got deep into my spiritual learning and teaching about myself and through a lot of therapy and body work and getting that energy out, getting that emotion out. Um, you know, that's when I was able to heal myself on that deep level that the experience I had held so deeply about my father was no longer act, you know, that was no longer true. And of course that's intertwined with the work of forgiveness and acceptance, which we'll do a lot of in this, um, in this program, but the first step was awareness. I had to understand what had happened. And for me, in that case, the heartbreak mirrored abandonment. And so that was my work. It wasn't anything anymore about this person who did this, even though I, would, I you know, for a long time, I wanted to just Bart Simpson him. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that was the work for me is to learn to heal my feeling of abandonment from my early childhood and not until i got a, a, a grasp on that is that i started to attract a different kind of man into my life uh, someone who respected and saw me for really who i was who i am and i kid you not like <laughs> few months later, I met the, the man that I actually married, you know, because it doesn't take too long. It just all these, this, all this dysfunction happens until one day you learn the lesson and it's done. And it might come up, come back in different ways, different layers, because everything is so layered. Um, but the, let's turn on the light here. But initially, that was that was it so i digress a lot <laughs> a big way here but i just wanted to share this story because it seems like a lot of us are um, in a space where it's important to let love into our lives again it's really important to um you know get better feel better feel more happy feel more love so um I'm going to help you here. Um, I'm going to ask you to, I'm going to, you know, do a little maybe guided um, imagery with you just to allow us to open up our hearts to some more love. So see, there's a little tear coming down. I don't know why it's deciding to trickle down just now. I'm not actually sad anymore um, about the situation I shared, but it, it's very true. It's very real. Um, so, um, so yeah, let me know what, what this feels like. I see in the chat, Natasha saying, it's very true, totally agree. Um, scared to love again, ultimately want to get better. Um, you know, I need to get better because uh, it just doesn't feel good, right? It doesn't feel good to be holding on to some deep old grudge. So what I want to uh, offer to you guys in this program and you'll hear me say that a lot and will repeat it many times and this is the essence of what 
um, the teachings and the videos are going to be about is how to change. And there is a process that I've come up with. I think it's getting dark outside. That's why I'm getting a little, a little bit darker here. So the process of change is ultimately it's the formula that I've come up with, which is awareness, which is our first lesson here, no, lesson one, plus acceptance, plus action equals change. So remember the three A's, awareness, acceptance, and action will give you change. And you can apply this to anything, literally anything you're going through. So awareness is the first step. And sometimes we do this through body work, through meditation, through yoga. Um, somebody points something out to you. It's all ways to become more aware. And then the second step, which we'll talk about next week, is acceptance. Now that I'm aware of this, I need to work on accepting and forgiving the situation and what had happened and that it happened to me and that I was involved and in, that I had that experience. And whoever else was involved in that experience, I need to learn to accept and forgive them for what they did or didn't do. Because anything other than love and forgiveness is only hurting me, right? No matter who, who the person is, anything other than love and forgiveness on my part is only hurting me. And then the third step, the next step is action. Now that I'm aware of this, I've done some work around forgiving and accepting the situation, the person, myself, what happened, what didn't happen. Now I need to take some action. So what does this action look like? It can be a conversation. It can be a decision. It can be a physical move. It can be... Um, setting a boundary, it can be asking for help. What does this ac action actually looks like so that I can achieve the change that I wanna see? And you see, without any of the three A's, awareness, acceptance, or action, you can, you know, change is difficult because you're back in the same circle. So the, the hardest one, the hardest part of it all, and way easy to say, not so easy to do is acceptance and forgiveness because that can take time and this is why this program itself is an introduction for you and from this moment on you have tools to then go on and apply to anything that's going on in your life because i can promise you that after four weeks you will be healed forgiven forgotten <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to take for you. I don't, I don't even know how long it's going to take for me to, to deal with the things I have. I just know one thing. My commitment to my happiness is what matters most. And my happiness and me putting myself first and taking time for myself and learning to appreciate me first is not selfish, my friends. That's called self-care. And, you know, in a lot of cultures, a lot of traditions, be, taking care of yourself is sometimes seen as selfish. And I want to bust that myth right now. <laughs> it is not selfish. It is necessary. Because, you know, the common analogy we use with the airplane oxygen mask they say you sh need to put your mask on first before you help someone else. Well, yeah, in the same way, you cannot be good to anyone else, including yourself, if you don't put yourself first. So for a lot of people who are parents, people who are caregivers, um, it's hard for us to not you know, see others and put others in front of us and want to help. Um, but it's necessary because if I don't feel good, if I'm not, you know, taking care of my star player, who is me, I can't help you. And the same goes in your life. 
So whether you're, you know, a caregiver, um, you know, a nurse, a mom, <laughs> moms especially, um, anything you do, if you don't put yourself first, that um, the satisfaction or that what's the word misalignment will leak through and whoever you're with will feel that. So the best thing you can do for everybody else is to take care of yourself. And again, that comes with acceptance and forgiveness and love. And that starts with us, with you, with me, love towards me, love towards who I am, what, what I want, what's important to me. And this is why I want to encourage you to let me know what is important to you. What are your, uh, what's your intention? What do you want? You know, and my attempt will be to help you through this, um, the course of these weeks to understand, to listen to your body and to know when you need to take care of yourself and to know, to know when, you know, you're being triggered and to know when something is coming up for you and how to deal with it. We're going to cover a lot about the energetic system, our chakras. As you know, I love to work with the chakras. You all probably got um, the chakra awareness journal guide and hopefully you're using it. But these emotions, they're not, they're not a joke. So they're held in their body somewhere. They are real and there are ways to work with them and understand them and it's another language so that's why we're talking about the language of the body um so so anyways i don't see many of you live here um and if you're watching the replay amazing drop me uh, a question or a comment or anything that you need my support with in an email um, I will make sure to take a look at all that. There is probably about 20 people in this program. So um, this pre-launch in this program. So I appreciate all of you so much. And some of you have been my diehards. You do everything I put out there. And I'm really appreciative of that. Natasha, you're one of those people. And um, thank you for that. So I'm going to hop off. If you have any questions right now, please pop it in the chat. Um, if not, email me. This is not over. This is just the beginning. I just want to say hello. We started with love and I want to encourage you to notice where and how you're practicing self-love and self-care in your life. And rate that on a scale from one to 10. One being very bad at it, 10 being I'm super good at it. Where are you on the scale from one to 10 on the self-care scale? And that's important because we're gonna really, really work on that. Um, I wanna connect you back to the star player. The star player is you, you, okay? Um, I'm my star player, you are your star player. And that star player needs attention. So we're going to be giving the star player a bunch of attention. Are you up for that? Um, so thank you again so much for being here. Uh, I'm going to jump off and we'll see you again soon. Have an amazing, amazing weekend. Bye for now.